guys. Welcome to the Chemical of the Month. I'm Chris. Here's Joe. Remember, bring your charts out. Uh, bring your NIOSH guide out. If you want to bring out your equipment so you can link visually the equipment with the hazards and the PPE, you're welcome to do that. So let's get started. Uh, today's Chemical of the Month is Oxygen Difluoride. All right, so we're responding on oxygen difluoride. And remember, again, let's take a couple of seconds. Why are we doing this? There's 120 million chemicals, all right, according to the CAS numbers. You can't remember 120 million of them. Because how many people have run on oxygen difluoride? Nobody. Yeah. A handful. A handful and of that. And so now if you don't have it in your hard drive that you've never ran it, if I would have said propane, everybody knows what to do. I say oxygen difluoride, nobody knows what to do because we haven't ran it, all right? So that's why we, it's not that we're cowards, it's that we're fearful of things that we don't understand, and all of a sudden you go in charge of this call. So now watch how the hazmat IQ system, it, it replaces fear with confidence. I go to chart number two. I go on oxygen. Hey, Chris, just one second on this one. Hey, remember about the four-step system. Chris is taking you to step one. Like, let me just run you through the system. Remember, step one is size up. Size up means I'm trying to paint myself a picture of what I expect when I get there. But size up should subject to change, right? And you don't have all day to do size up. So the way our system works, step one happens within the first 30 seconds. Walking to the truck, getting to the truck, pulling out your charts. So Chris does step one. When we jump in the truck, we size up that we know approximately what the hazards would be. Worst case scenario. Then what we do when we get to the truck, we open up the NIOSH to verify it. And that information in step one and step two drives the entire call. It drives my PPE, it drives my meters, and tells me what to do once I get in the hot zone. So let's go back to Chris. Chris is going to do step one, then I'll do step two, Chris. So I'm sitting here, I'm, I, we're, we're at Kent Island Volunteer Fire Department. They were nice enough to let us this backdrop to do these videos. So I'm sitting here having lunch, because it's around lunchtime. There's a, there's a turnover on, uh, on the highway behind us. I'm going to be there in four minutes. The name of the chemical is oxygen difluoride. So I'm going to go to chart number two, because I've never been to oxygen difluoride, so I can't size it up, but the system will help me. Oxygen difluoride. I go to chart two and I look for the word oxygen. Is the word oxygen there? No. Go to the no, and that arrow takes you to an above the line. Now, like a quarterback, and so I was lieutenant on my hazmat rig, like I'm a quarterback on a football team. You could be a captain, you could be the foreman, you can be the chief, you can be the sergeant, you can be the military. Oxygen difluoride doesn't care what uniform you wear. The hazards remain the same. This is above the line, right? Because it takes you to the above the line SOG. Now, what's above the line? It means that as of this very moment, in my mental picture, my size up is that this is the gas that's heavier than air, that the initial hot zone is 300 feet, that is flammable, that is toxic, that is corrosive uh, pH paper red, that has fluorine in it, F paper yellow. They're all there in the chart. You don't have to remember it. They're water reactive. They're air reactive. That's the size up. Now I'm going to get a little bit, I'm going to sharpen my size up by going to what chart? It says they'll continue on chart three. Right. I right. go to chart three. I go to the first box on the left, the char box, we call it. And we look for the syllable oxygen difluoride. Is it there? Does it match? Don't force it. Does it match? No. There's nothing there that seems to be oxygen difluoride. I see a set. I see a krill. I see allele, I see vinyl, I don't see oxygen. Go to the middle box. Go to the middle. Do you see oxygen there? Yes. You know what's interesting? When we, we put the oxygen in that box, a lot of people say, how can oxygen be a corrosive gas? And what it is, it's not oxygen. It's first name oxygen attached to something else, like this one is oxygen difluoride. So don't think just pure oxygen is a corrosive gas. It's oxygen difluoride, something like that. So plane number would be red zero. And hey, does this, you think this has fluoride in it? Listen to the name, oxygen difluoride. Remember what we said in the class, how many letters are in the word di? Two. So that means that whatever the next word is, there's two other, if this would have been trifluoride, how many letters are in tri? Be three. So to answer to my mind, now that we've taught you, now we say yes, not is there not one fluorine, there's how many? Because of the word di. Two fluorines. So, so you, the name gives you a clue a lot, right? If I ask you, here, here's a, here's a chemistry question for you. Hey, uh, do you guys know if there's chocolate chips 
In chocolate chip cookies? Yes. There How do is. you know that? Because it's in the word. Well, what about mint chocolate chip ice cream? It's in the word. What about vanilla ice cream? No, it's not in so the word. So the name gives you a lot of clue. So fluoride gives me a clue that there's fluorine in the yeah. chemical name. Which, remember, guys, the rule of one. When we go to a thermal burn, the rule of nine, to add up the percentage of body burn to the patient, this is the rule of one. 1% 1 exposure. Which is about the size of your palm. Right there. That's 1%. Can kill you. Can kill if that you. gets on your skin, it can kill you. So instead of calling this a red zero, I want to call this a red zero F. Red zero means corrosive gas. When I put an F on the end of it, it means corrosive gas with fluorine. Now here's something. Look how the charts are, are, are so intuitive. What color is the word oxygen? Red. Red. It means the pH paper will turn what color? Red. Right. Sure. Now fluorine is what color? Yellow, because the F paper is going to turn what color? Yellow. So right there, that's the reason those are color-coded, right? If pH paper is going to turn what color on ammonia? Look at your charts. Blue. Chlorine is going to turn the pH what color? Red. Hey, an important thing when you look at a red zero, if you go down and look at the hazards of red zero, it says toxic, flammable, and corrosive. Does that mean every corrosive gas is flammable? No. no. What it did was, if any of those corrosive gases were flammable, we put flammable in the size up. How will you know if it's flammable once you go to the book? Yeah. Is every house fire we respond to fully involved? No. But when we respond, we put gloves on our EMS calls. We get dressed out before we arrive on all structure fires. So when anything that has red zero is flammable, till I get to a book. So a good thing to know about that middle box, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Notice what it says, first name corrosive gas clue. It doesn't say first name corrosive gas fact. To become a fact, we have to go to the book and verify it. And then if you look, up, if you look in that box, it says the DOT four, the, four, the four DOT guide numbers that are corrosive gases. So since oxygen is red, I'm banking on it's going to be either 123, 124, or 125, but I'm not sure until I get to the book. So let's go to the book. Uh, it's page 239 on your NIOSH, top, oxygen difluoride. So, hey, we, so hey. again, you, Chris called it a gas. You go to the book, look at physical description. It says gas. Yeah, and listen, just to put, let, let's add reality. That colorless gas, you know what we say in class. It ain't colorless. It's invisible, all right? So this is an invisible gas. Look at the formula with fluorine in it, all right? So this is a badass chemical, and you can't see it. So why do we call it the meter cockpit, right? Just like a pilot flying at night. I need instruments to see what's ahead of me so I can make the proper decision. So first thing we want to know is what hazards does it have so we can match a meter to the hazards. So using the system, we said it's a gas. The molecular weight's 54. That gas is going down. The size up said red zeros were flammable. Look at the LEL and the UEL. Ain't none. So it ain't none. That's NA. So it does not, it's not flammable, which is good news, right? Next thing I want to know, is it corrosive? Well, we said it was a corrosive gas clue, so we'll look at the DOT guide number. 124. It is a corrosive gas that's an acid. Look at the formula. Let's just verify that fluoride in the name matches fluorine in the formula. O got it? O o F2. Two, so two fluorines in there. So we got a corrosive gas with fluorine. As soon as I hear that, I'm saying to myself, I am not going in that gas with turnout gear, right? Because doesn't turnout gear allow smoke to penetrate through? You go on a structure fire, you come back, and you smell your uniform, it smells like smoke. That means that smoke can penetrate through your turnout gear, so could oxygen difluoride. So I don't want to go in this. Chris, what if there's a line of sight rescue? If there's a line of sight rescue, I'm in turnout gear and SCBA, and I push forward until Look. I have a reason not to push forward. Here I am, dude. F paper yellow, I'm out. As soon as this turns yellow and I'm in turnout gear, I back out, even if there's a person alive. Remember what fluorine does. It takes a while to go through your skin to pull enough calcium out of your blood to kill you. But it will. If you're in a corrosive gas and we're hanging out right here, the 1% rule, we got 100% exposure. So we don't want to go into this environment. We're in turnout gear and SCBA. We need to call the hazmat team and have them bring their level A And if suits. you listen, guys, because I know when you go, when you fly as much as I have and you look down, this country is made up of small towns, but they're all connected by big roads. 
if you don't have fluorine in your community, but it goes through your community, and you don't have a hazmat, the, the hazmat team has to be five minutes away to save this guy. If it isn't within five or ten minutes away, then you need to have a level A suit. Then you need F paper and PH paper. Then you, because it's you that's going to make the rescue. So let's go down to using the book again. Let's talk about how toxic this is. Right? We said in the science that it was toxic. The IDLH tells me how toxic. This is a 0.5 part per million. A half of a part per million is toxic if you breathe it in. That's about as toxic as yes you it, get. Yes, it. Right? Remember, the gas chamber, hydrogen cyanide, has an IDLH of 50. And this has an IDLH of 0.5. Way more toxic than the, the uh, hydrogen cyanide from the gas chamber. Next thing to look at. I want to measure this stuff. Chris, it's invisible. So my first tool that I'm thinking I might be able to use on this is my PID. For the PID to work, the IP has to be less than 10.6. This is 13.1. PID will not work. Then I think, well, I just spent 10 grand on this FID. Hope the heck that thing works. I look but at the formula, and there's no carbon and hydrogen. You need if you carbon look at, and hydrogen for that to work. Look at the chart. When you look under FID, you'll see that a little kind of like a jogger, a memory jogger. The FID works when there's carbon and hydrogen. That's why the word char is down there. So how are we going to measure this? How are we going to know if it's there or not? Well, we can use pH paper. That will tell me it's an acid, but it won't tell me that acid has fluorine in it, just that it's an acid. But if it changes, is there something present there? I sure. can use F paper. Right. And I can use a halogen TIFF or a halogen meter. Another thing that they, the multi-ray now has is a hydrogen fluoride sensor that you can plug in here. The hydrogen fluoride sensor, this is oxygen difluoride, so it's not going to be exactly precise, but we don't need precision. We need to know if it's there or not there. Right. Because this is nasty stuff. You so, don't want to, here's not a big deal to quantify, just to qualify. But I've read a little deep. I've read, I've, and we show you in the, we show you in, in our system, always read note in incompatibility and reactivity because it says here under note it reacts very slowly with water it doesn't put a time on slowly we don't know is that a minute a, an hour or a day so it, but this reacts very slowly in water which is moisture to form hf hydrofluoric acid so the sensor that i pulled might not might might measure oxygen difluoride but it'll measure HF. Close enough for what we're doing. A component of, right. of degradation. And you know what's cool about that is if you look at solubility of oxygen difluoride, Chris says it reacts slowly to form HF. Well, if you look at solubility, look how low it is. 0.02%. That's why it's so slowly. But who cares how slow it is? If it's on your skin, it doesn't matter if it takes 10 minutes to form hydrofluoric acid or 5, it can still kill you. So what would we wear on this one? If there's a rescue to be made and somebody's alive, no turnout gear. We'll call the hazmat team. We'll get them in and out as fast as possible. But unfortunately for that person that's been exposed, they're probably going to die. And then if we go to clean it up, again, we're going to wear a level A suit. I will check permeation. Remember, at permeation, you don't want a suit that permeates instantly or two minutes or five minutes. You're looking for a suit that has a 480-minute breakthrough time. If Chris, will we do water with this one? Do you think water would help us? 0.2%. What would if, water do? If you go to the charts, if, you'll see that 10% is the breaking point. If the, so if I'm a leaking cylinder, and the solubility is below 10%, it's like 0.02. Oh, then I'm going to push it. So he gets a fog nozzle. He's going to take that gas. You're not changing that gas into a solution. What are you doing? I'm pushing it. You're just moving the hazard like somewhere propane. else. I'm pushing it. So that's why when you have low solubility, you move the hazard. You don't change that. So now look how we can MacGyver this because no one, you can't call Chemtrek or Canutech or Poison Control, you, the manufacturer. You can't call anybody to help you, man. You, you know, you're a quarterback and you, you got 40 seconds to call the play. You don't have anybody to help and there's, you. And there's no really directions, right? There's no they, directions. They give, you, they give you science information. So, the, the directions come from your brain. So, so let's see if you can figure this out. Does it make sense to you? What instruments would we use to see if it was just the presence? Well, pH paper tell me if the corrosivity is there, right? One, two, four. pH F paper would tell me if there's fluorine, right? Because it tends around 10 to 20 parts per million. It changes from pink to yellow. And what's the other one? What's, a, what's an instrument? Go to chart number one. Look at element number nine. You see that F? That H, that F? We can measure that with a Freon meter. That's why the word Freon's there. How much is a Freon meter? 150 bucks. It's a, remember, that doesn't give you numbers. It gives you ticks. So the way you operate that thing is you, when you turn it on, 
you turn that tick, there's a little, a little uh, button on there that you can change the tick rate. You want it to be every one second. Tick, tick, tick. So in your mind, you're thinking, I should hear a tick every one second unless I find a leak. If I go on this one and it's got fluorine in it and I walk towards that room and it goes tick, 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 tick. I know I got a leak. There's still fluorine. There's a, there's a halogen there. But if my F paper goes yellow, I identified the halogen as fluorine. Yeah, remember, don't forget about that fluorine. Corrosive gases with fluorine are bad players. They can kill you if you're not in the right PPE. So remember, for corrosive gas with fluorine, level A all the time. Okay, that's it for this month's Chemical of the Month. Uh, from Kent Island, Maryland, we're going to sign off. I'm Joe. I'm Chris. Have a great day. Stay safe.